September 12, 2019, the Northampton Council on Aging meeting, monthly meeting. And does anybody have any other people that are excused today? We know Ben is excused, but I haven't heard anyone else. You didn't get any messages yourself today? Okay. All right, we'll proceed. Maybe, well, Kathy usually pops in after school, so I think. And Jen, I think those are only two. So only two that aren't here. It's Deborah now. Okay. Okay. So it looks like there's no one here from the public to speak to us. So we'll just go right into reviewing the minutes from the August 8th meeting. And uh, hopefully everybody's had a chance to, to uh, it was a short meeting, but the minutes seemed quite lengthy. Thank so, you, Linda. <laughs> <laughs> so I would like to entertain a motion to accept the minutes for August 8th. All right, Casey. Second, anyone? Second. Second. Bob, and, um, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstaining? Okay, passes unanimously. Okay. Oh, yes, and please uh, silence your cell phones, and we are recording, so if you happen to be recording, we'd like to know that you're doing it as well. If you are, we need to know that. All right, so we'll go right into announcements. Do we have any announcements today? Okay. Old business. I guess we have some old business to talk about. About, about the Cultural Arts Committee and involvement in programs, activities, initiatives. And I have some questions on the business. Okay. Um, well, so Nancy, uh, the program coordinator, asked me to um, sort of reach out that people uh, from this committee could, the council could um, get involved if we, we could use some more people for the arts and culture group um, because that that may split off even into subgroups around specific issues um, or programming um, kinds of programming um, and um, if you know people that you might be interested in arts and culture programming and helping with that that we can also recruit patrons and other people and so you could reach out to Nancy about that so if anybody has any questions about the, the level of commitment, should they just go to Nancy and talk to her? Yeah, people there, say, what does it mean to have to involve? So they're How meeting monthly meeting? right okay. now, but okay. um, I think that there is discussion about um, different programming that may be developed and tasks mm -hmm. that different people could, if okay. they're willing to take on mm -hmm. in terms of um, recruiting people to do performance here or things like that. Um, we do need people to sort of do some of that light work for us because that's something we struggle to do is to connect with people in the community. Should I, should I uh, talk to her? You know, the Arts Council is, is a wealth of information has connections with the law because I'm on the Arts Yeah, that's exactly what we do on the Arts and Culture. So you can come in and give us information okay. about what you're suggesting or you what you want to take on. I'm on that committee. So okay. Sorry. Feel free. Okay. And uh, Jean is responsible oh, for to getting a meeting date. Is that right, Jean? Are you coming up with a meeting date? Yeah. Okay. Um and we didn't we didn't talk about breaking up into some groups. <laughs> well it's not big enough to do that yet. But, but, but if we get about trying to get bigger in order to do that. So it just it's just a little feedback that if you were at the meeting and you come and hear the report from the person who's in it, has got all stuff that you never heard before, it's an interesting twist. <laughs> right, right. Well, I guess in reviewing the purpose of it with Nancy, um, you know, I think that what we what we really need is for people who are interested in specific kinds of programming happening here to take off to take on some of the tasks. Um, and so, so right now we have 
five people on the committee and our big challenge is getting them all in one room at the same time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's why, yes. so that's why when you said we're going to have more people, why I was like, because I'm in charge of the doodle poll. <laughs> um, I'm going like, oh, all right. Well. Right, so maybe there are people who are interested in specific kinds of programming that can meet together at a different time and that it doesn't have to be about every topic in one meeting. It can be that there's a music, there are people working on music or people working on theater and that that can be a collaborative. Um, because sometimes it is hard to get everyone in the same room but you don't always need to get everyone from every, you know, people want to maybe specialize in what they're most interested in. Are you the core committee, right? You and two, three of the four of the people, right? If you're if you're interested, then um, that would be great, and you can also refer people to to Nancy, and then she can try and set up the place for that. If people can't all meet at the same time, does that make sense? Yet you're looking like you're not. At the meeting, we talked about. Right, I'm just putting out a call for people to get involved. Yeah, we can't hash it out here because the committee is not here. Um, okay, and Bob, you had some questions about some old business. Well, old business, yeah. I was going back, I'm going back about a year. Uh oh. Um, Good for you. Well, I, I actually do read the minutes and notes. None of us remember last year. Yeah. Well, uh, what, what brought my attention to it was in the uh, new uh, paper that came out, uh, we mentioned that we are uh, working with the YMCA and they're doing the Fit for Life program. And I went back on the old notes. In July of last year, uh, we were looking at doing some type of partnership with other organizations, uh, the YMCA and Forbes Library. Uh, we were looking at restructuring programs and costs to see if we could make the fees more uniform. Then uh, two months went by and uh, under new business, YMCA will be offering some classes designed and taught by their staff, mm -hmm. dance, sculpt, Zumba, yoga, uh, cooking, fitness, and health counseling programs are going to be coming in the future. Uh, Marie uh, wrote a grant uh, to fund the program. Live Strong and Healthy S Smart was part of YMCA's program to begin with, and that YMCA instructors to take over a, a class uh, in November. Uh, Michael Ford asked about uh, partnership with the YMCA and what kind of access we had to the YMCA and also mentioned the uh, community music school and in December we had in the director's report that uh, many new people are applying uh, to the fitness center for life and the YMCA will be there under the uh, offering new fitness classes mm -hmm. uh, but when I looked at the paper it appears that uh, uh, somewhere around 17 classes are now being done by the Y. Is, are all the programs going to be skirted over to the Y, or is it uh, still going to be some private instructors or anything else? Well, so we're in the middle of a year-long pilot, which is coming yep. to an end in October. I mean, the pilots, um, we are going to be defining how we move forward. That's why we're doing a survey right now of fitness um, of members who use the center for fitness. So we are doing a survey, we're going to be looking at what people want, um, but we did add a bunch more classes from the Y, um, partly because we lost an instructor and partly because there was interest. Um, and um, so we are meeting with the Y regularly, but it may not be the Y that if we go out for a contract that we end up contracting with, but my, um, I was going to talk about this in my report anyway, but um, um, my feeling is that we don't, we don't have a dedicated fitness coordinator. Mm -hmm. um, we are, we have a lot of vendors, basically contracted instructors who we 
we don't really have time to communicate with on a regular basis, who um, we don't really vet in a, in a way that makes our services um, consistent or maybe up to par with what other organizations are doing specifically for seniors. I wanted to be able to offer um, evidence-based programming that only certain kinds of places have the training to do. Yeah, or certified instructors. Yeah, and so I was looking at trying to create a more flexible and more all-encompassing kind of system that would serve patrons with um, better quality programming. I'm not saying that the programming we're offering is is not good, but, but I feel like I can't have the kind of oversight of it that I would like where, and I need the experts out there to be sort of running that part of our programming here, and I think it's one of the most important and the most utilized programs that we have. Um, and so that's why we're doing this pilot, to kind of assess what um, what's working, what's not working, what we might want to define as a service contract, um, and we're getting input from patrons. Um, we weren't serving people who had jobs before we started this pilot. Mm -hmm. We were not open during hours when people were home from work. Yeah. And so we have seen an exorbitant amount of new members joining our In the fitness area? Because of those hours. Um, so. You know, one of the reasons I brought it up, since I'm now, I spend some time working at the different things, you know, I, I hear a few people, not a lot, but a few people saying that it looks like the Y is taking over the senior center. Okay, just from the, looking at the newspaper and people talking. So some but, people might think that's a good thing. And, and some, some people, people are, are, right. And you hear both sides of it. Yes. And I hadn't heard anything, because really a lot of it took place before it came on. Mm. So I figured I'd at least ask what was going on. You know, uh, other groups that I had worked with in the past on boards, when they were making changes that were somewhat significant, always failed to communicate enough with the public on why things were changing. Mm. They see the changes and they don't feel part of it because there was no communication before everything happened. Everything happens and now they're saying, well, why did this happen? I didn't know anything. Why, why, why did you change this? Mm. And, it, and uh, then they started uh, having you know, the fireside chats and things like that with groups of people ahead of time to let them know that these things you'll see coming. Don't be surprised if this happens and this happens. And it sort of powders the way into getting uh, people accustomed to change. Change is difficult. Uh, you know, I find I find many people at my age anything change in a routine <laughs> sets everything off kilter. It's something positive. It doesn't matter. It's just different. It's, it's different. Just different. Right. I know. Right. Well, I have been communicating about these things. Not everybody reads the Chronicle, um, you know, but I, I have been in various ways and I've even, you know, I've even gone into classes and talked to people, but, you know, um, yes, people don't like change. They don't want to change their shoes or they do. They don't like it if other people don't Your change shoes, their yes. shoes. Or, I mean, it, we, you know, we, we're trying to address a lot of issues and even the price change, I hear a lot of, a lot of grumbling about the difference in price now that right. I pay monthly. And, mm -hmm. uh, well, so yes, but um, so we're looking at all the things we're offering and all the prices and looking at how to um, make it more accessible to people of different incomes. Um, and you know, a lot of people that we've been talking to who are grumbling didn't know that we had a wellness grant for instance and that is what that is for and um, so you know I just think that if you aren't paying attention you're only looking for what you don't like and then you don't actually see that we we've, we've been thinking about all the pieces like we have I but I do think there are a lot of issues we need to address about the fiscal um, the fiscal piece of it and the um, the offerings and um, people don't always understand how complicated it is to create 
um, programs that serve every need and are fiscally sound. Not just the one that they're focused on. Right, so we, we're looking at it from many different perspectives in terms of what is sustainable, what is what we should be providing, um, and you know we can't all we can't always be um, on top of things in the current format that we're doing, and I think that that is a disservice um, because because of health epidemic issues. Uh, we need to prioritize. So I people didn't like it when I got rid of soda and candy in the coffee shop, and I said we are a city department and. We are on board with the city's health initiatives mm -hmm. and you can do whatever you want but we will not be providing that here yeah. So, yes. yeah the question I'm just trying to if I'm getting what you said and what you said together is the notion with someone an entity like the Y is to be able to provide that sort of overall guidance and, and huge fitness as a package yes of offering that need a variety of needs but and then ensure quality is that mm -hmm. yes and to have that kind of oversight so that um i think there's uh they have that's their specialty yeah okay right? no I'm not, I'm and great. and they make sure that their instructors are trained um to the highest standards and so it may be a different place that we end up going with. It may be the why. I don't know, but I do think that without um, we we can't afford to have to have instructors on the payroll, for instance. We can't um, have our own trainings. Um, right. So and then obviously we need to be able to ensure that whoever's providing any service, whether it's fitness or not. Mm -hmm in the municipal department is qualified to be providing that service. Right. right. So, yeah. with the so, I mean, I guess there there is always grumbling about oh, whatever is being changed, but mm -hmm. I what I want people to take away is changes, I know change is hard. We are thinking about these things very thoughtfully, very making very um, careful um, moves towards creating the best programming that we can provide and it's all with the best of intentions and and it's not that we don't um, that we're not sensitive to all the issues it's that we can't always address every mm -hmm. issue oh. yeah, okay. uh, the question I have if people do have I mean is there a forum or somebody either, like I mean, obviously we're just an advisory board um, but you know in terms of you know because People will say, well, I'll put some question or something like that, but I don't feel like I, I, I'm being heard or I just feel like I'm dismissed. So is there kind of a forum we can have in place for people who are concerned about things that they get a, a, a response back and, and be able to talk to people? So that's why we're doing a survey. Mm -hmm. We cannot sit down with everyone who has I know a you can't, but no, I'm not saying you have to do it, but is there another thing that we as a board may be helpful in terms of, of kind of of uh, uh, being a mediating mm -hmm. um, factor in this kind of thing. I'm, I, I'm just bringing this out. Um, that, um, I think that your role is to, when you hear people expressing concerns, is is to ask me for input so that you know what to say listen. to them mm -hmm. and to listen to well, them. That's what I do. Yeah. But really, um, I cannot. Um, I can't put you in a position where you are having to explain and define everything. I think what you need to do is basically reassure people that we are that we are doing we are doing the best that we can and that we're trying to address all the issues and that you can bring their concern to us and we will include it in our assessment process. Um, that's why we're doing the survey and we're going to take all of those comments and we're going to, to sit down and look at everything that's being brought up. So we've gotten hundreds, hundreds of surveys back. Good. Wow, that's, that's very good. good. Yes. How, how many people have been, roughly how many people have been surveyed? Yeah. Well, we've it's been lot. You're putting it it's in lot. the yeah. gym in, at the front desk and okay. in the rooms where uh, oh, fitness oh. is happening. Yeah. Um, we've alerted people through the Chronicle and through uh, Constant Contact and Facebook. Facebook. 
So, um, well, that, it, that speaks to your earlier comment about how popular it is. People wanting to, to well, we, their yeah, I mean, we yeah. have mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of people coming through here using the fitness center, and mm -hmm. um, you know, we're not going to be that? able to put in showers and things like that. Yeah. I mean, there are places in the city yeah. that part of the why, if you want that, right? Right. There are places in the city that, where, like, sometimes our answer has to be like, we can't actually supply that here. Yeah. There are places in the city that you can get those needs met if mm -hmm. you. But I, I think that um, we have to ascertain what it is we can do to the best of our ability, and that's what we are doing. So if you can just reassure people that um, nothing that we're doing is a personal attack or a... Oh, no, I don't think Oh, yes, they do think sometimes that it is a personal attack. They feel like we're taking things away or that we're changing things and that it feels... Like there's a sense of loss and really that is not our intention we are trying to do we are trying to serve people um, and I think that, that um, people they, they're upset about any change but really change is part of life so I know but it, it's hard for some people who are, who are, who are marginalized etc but it is difficult for some people and I think what I like to see is terms of our our responsibility is to treat people with kindness and to kind of like understand. And, I, and I've worked in management, I mean, I have been on a management team and I understand things come above, you know, that you have no control over. But my responsibility is to how then communicate this in a kind and gentle way to, to people the way that I would like to be treated, like this is what it is. And let's see if we can work together and kind of work through this together and, and give, give things some time. But, you know, that's the thing I think when I, when I, and I'm sure you're the same way, Bob. Well, people some people coming. are saying they're going to stop coming because of all the changes. They're just well, you know, that's, I mean, I get that it's like how do you, how do you kind of, mm -hmm. that's their choice, yeah. but how do you say, well, let's let's try to understand right. these kinds of things. Take some time. Let's and take some time and happens. talk about it, but it's yeah. the way people are treated, and I guess, that, yeah, if we all have difficulty. They take it personally. Yeah. And like you said, yeah. So we have not treated anyone with anything but respect. People, um, when they're angry, can, uh, there's sort of a ganging up that happens, sort of this, um, all the complaints come out on the table, and we can't address everything at once. Um, we're doing the best we can, and when we aren't treated with, um, we, it needs to be civil and respectful, right, right. and um, I can't, I really can't go into a class and have a conversation with 30 people at once, because that is not, does not end up being productive, and it, and it that is what has happened, and um, but I also what you're hearing is the result of an instructor leaving, um, and people being very attached to it, this instructor, and that was her choice. I can't control that. Um, so um, know, I'm sorry, can you know, do people know that you left by your own choice? You um, they have all kinds of interpretations <laughs> about what that is about, but um, some people mix that up. Another reason why I would like to have some oversight of instructors that is not like we have 20 different instructors, but that we have someone who those instructors report to and are trained by and are kept to accountable for um, certain kinds of because we cannot have um, a rogue 20 instructors yep. doing whatever they think they should be doing and crossing boundaries crossing boundaries yep. and we're trying to have a professional environment here and mm -hmm. we can't always tell our patrons everything that we're dealing with yep. well, and, I get that, and I so you do it yeah. you are hearing mm -hmm. things that may be very inaccurate Oh, well, you always take it for yeah. yeah. And that's the thing. We pro I mean, we understand that you get two sides. He said two sides. My goodness, just stand up down there. Let's put your two cents in, Michael. I'm trying to respond to a couple of comments. I would find myself in a position to be more useful and more an ambassador for this group and for this senior center if. Maybe not a forum, but if we had brief opportunity to learn why things have been done so that we could mirror that. For example, 
I'll just use an example. So we don't have soda and candy. I'm sure there were some people who thought it was a sort of capricious change. If all of us were able to say, look, here's what that's about, rather than let me find out, I'll, I'll ask Marie. People, when you do that, they sort of feel, well, it's not going anywhere. So I took Kathy's comment to be, is there a way when we can have brief discussions so we're sort of clued into mm -hmm. what the reasons well, are? Well, I can send you reports about, um, as a heads up, that mm -hmm. something is happening. Um, we decided that we need to do that when we uh, moved the pool balls to a different spot for our receptionist because that was very upsetting for them. You know, I mean, it's just, you know, like people don't, they're like, this is how it's always been and I don't understand why and I'm very upset about it. And so, you know, I understand we need to be sensitive, but also um, I feel like I can send you things, but you can't respond because of open meeting law. So you will just have to take my little update as, and then um, then you might have questions and need to call me. And so basically what happens is there's just a lot of time put into this. And if you could just trust me to do the best, <laughs> I'm doing the best I can and I'm doing it with the best of intentions. I'm not talking about trust, I'm just talking yeah. about having Oh. Decent information that I can share that comes from you. I trust you. Right. But well, if I don't know, I can't respond. I have to say. So, but you, can can you I just, ask, how many updates a month would you send us if you were going to send them? How, like yeah. on an average, how many times do you think that would happen? Um, Even once would be. It might be once a day. Yeah. <laughs> is there? I mean, is there a way that because this is really an? I mean, this is an open meeting. And so you, we would we could discuss things, but if, I, I do if, bring if, updates to this meeting. I yeah. Just, so uh, so I didn't know that the that you had stopped. Just I mean, this is just an example. I don't right. want to belabor it, but just right. the example of like stopping to do the candy and stuff. I didn't know that, and I didn't know that you did it because you felt as if it was part of a city initiative for healthy living, mm -hmm. and and so if you had as part of the new business. If there are things that are changes in policy or important things that are going to be obvious changes to the patrons of the senior center, then that would feels to me like that would be a real new business would be a really good place for those. Yeah. And so and so instead of us reacting when we hear from people their reactions to um, changes. It, before the changes happen, so if every, you could, if you I could am doing that, and every month I write in my article for the Chronicle. Oh, but I'm talking about the board. I yes, mean, but I, I guess I, I'm doing that. I'm, um, right. I mean, if you read my article every month, I am laying foundation for new things or um, explaining some change, uh -huh. and like I cha we changed the phone system. Yeah, um, it's very good. By and I yeah. and I explained in my article about why, and uh -huh. I know that these things aren't always popular, but there are really good reasons that this is actually going to be better. And you might not really believe it until you know some time passes, but that is not meant to be a barrier. It is meant to actually pro make it possible for us to provide a higher level of service. Because I think I'm looking for all the holes and the unmet needs and the, you know, the the areas that we are not doing good enough in. So what I was suggesting was that some of those things curated to be the ones that probably would have the most reactive effect might be important, might be useful to include those in the new business, so that if anyone on the council who are the ambassadors who will be approached about these mm -hmm. things would have the background information and, and I, have, have the moment. What I'm saying is I am clarify. doing that. I don't, so we could talk to you about it and clarify it because if you send those things to us and we can't ask you about mm -hmm. it because of the open meeting law, then if we did it at the open meeting, then we could talk about it. Could I am putting it in my report every month, anything that's coming up. Sometimes 
we don't decide to do things until it's, you know, kind of like the phone thing has been done between the last meeting and this meeting. So what you're saying is the thing to do is read the Chronicle and in new business ask your questions. I will, I, I have been every month putting it in my report, anything that's coming up that's changing or new. Um, and, in, and so, and I'm also doing that for patrons because I know that the more I do that, the less ruffled feathers there are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't, if I, can, if I can cut down on the amount of angst that I'm receiving, I am more than willing to do it. Or that people are feeling, if I might add that. Yes, because, yes. Both. because Both. I, you know, I yes. just, I, people don't understand. Yes. And, but sometimes when I'm able to really explain the nuances, but, um, you know, I, I, you know, I've, we've done a lot. We've done a lot in a year. Um, I think we also have to be careful not to commiserate with the negative feedback that we get back. Right. Because what we want to do is, you know, there, there are going to be things that I don't know about that I can say, well, I'll, I'll take this under advisement mm -hmm. and I'll find out some information mm -hmm. for you. It's the best that you can do because this is a business that's working with a new director trying to move things forward and get things going. And I don't think it's possible for us to know every single change that's happening. But if we're finding that we're getting complaints, the squeaky wheel is the loudest always. Mm -hmm. Hardly ever do we hear the good stuff as loud as we hear the bad stuff. So, but bring it back to Marie or, or to Jay or to whoever and you know, ask a question, which is what I've been doing when, because I do get a lot of feedback from people mm -hmm. and I find an answer mm -hmm. so that you can't, we all can't oh, yeah. be totally that's informed all the time. Right. Mm -hmm. Is it ever possible to have an informal <coughs> meeting, like um, where you would just say, let me let you know how I view things over the last six months, like twice a year have a big pizza party? You mean with patrons? No, with us. Um, that isn't a formal meeting and saying, yes. where you let us know how wonderful Can you have a meeting do. without a meeting? I don't think so. No. <laughs> it has to be a public record. It has to be open to the public. It has to be posted. Um, we can only come three at a time. <laughs> I mean, anything up to that is very, very strict. Well, it's, 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 it's to protect transparency so that the public doesn't feel like decisions were made behind closed doors. And it is for everyone's protection that we do that and if you want to download that's what it looks like and this is not a governing board so it's you know i think a governing board has different um thank you they they might go into executive session and close the door and the public cannot be there and they can have conversations that can't happen in a public meeting but um that's we have we have staff we have a structure that we are dealing with situations and things that we can't share with you mm -hmm. um, and so it's a different kind of system but that doesn't mean that you can't be in the loop and that I can't let you know what's going on but I I just want to make sure that um, I think that your strongest role and help in this process is to really let people know that that they can be heard when they want to talk about stuff, and that um, that you believe that we are doing the best we can, and that we're trying to do better, and that um, sometimes that really just calms people's um, feelings down. That like, oh, well, you're not upset about it. Maybe I don't need to be upset. About it. I think that like Dennis has had some experiences like that when he's gone to events where people kind of vent stuff, and then. He, you know, he was like, well, maybe it was because of this, or, or he knows something about it and says, well, I think that she did that because, and people have been like, oh, I never thought of it that way. Well, so sometimes, that's things we know, I agree. I mean, I yeah, think that's part. I mean, that's our hope, and the, the benefit of having this forum is that we're talking about it here, and that's that's Yeah, it may be helpful and to belabor this, but one consideration for our next meeting is, which is, someone said it. The thing, the changes that I'm getting, what are the biggest pain points? You know, if, if for example, 
no soda, no candy in the coffee shop is still a pain. Um, well, I hear a lot less about that. I mean, I, 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 I would say, I can tell you what I'm talking about. What I would say is that maybe to that is, is there a sign up? I've seen signs everywhere that says, we don't serve, blah, blah, blah. And, and so, so it's there. You don't have to. So I think there are ways. Right, because we care about you. Oh, exactly. Yeah, that's you know, good. City's good health yeah, that's what I, I say to people. It's, but, but, it's and not just as an example, but I'm just saying that there's obviously some invested in interest here. Can we take the, another meeting, mm -hmm. the things that are causing the biggest pain, is it the top two or three, just to make sure that we all understand the context. Mm -hmm. And do you remember the dance floor? Right. I w yes. I I can tell you what all the pain points are. So, but so, so we have to have the context so that mm -hmm. it's not. Yeah, you know. And this is the reason it was done. And, and then, oh, I didn't think about that. Just a suggestion. I think four or five of us are saying the same thing. Yeah. yeah. We're saying the same thing. Yeah. Awesome. I have to think about how because there's so much that you know gets me to thinking. But I guess I would say that in the director's report, most of the time, unless you may have forgotten, it is the heads up about what's coming. And in the Chronicle articles that you write, it is sort of the bigger things, like the phone system is a big thing. And so you write this article, like, bear with us. So I would, I would say, and if people miss meetings or they don't remember, I happen to recollect at a meeting, it may, it may not show up in the minutes and when, about when you brought up candy and soda wasn't going to be sold as part. Now, other people may not remember that. And I do remember thinking, oh, that ain't going to go over well. Even I occasionally buy a Milky Way. And, you know, so that kind well, of there, thing. Well, there are a couple things oh, to set it up. Well, the reality yeah. is that people get their sweets from Kevin's Beats. They get sweets in the right. We're providing. So so we guess, replaced it. We didn't just take it away. We replaced, we replaced it, it right. with homemade baked goods. Right. But, yeah. that's, that are just but that's not my point. My point yeah. was that was a heads up thing that we know was going to be pushed back. My real point is was what I said, is that in your report, you faithfully do every month try to remember everything and in the Chronicle. Now, we may not always read the Chronicle or your report, or may not remember everything that you said, or if it's in between meetings, it may not have not, not have come up. Because I have numerous conversations like with you, with different people yep. like you had mentioned. Mm -hmm. And then, it's, you know, with my limited memory power, I can go, well, actually, the reason is because of this, if I can, you know, if I can remember. And like you said, there's always going to be pushback. People get attached to instructors. Oh, yes. Like, you know, my new doctor, dentist, hair cutter, mechanic, you have to be younger than me, and you have to not retire until I'm dead, because I don't want, you know, the change. Change again, yes. The other most recent conversations I've had um, which is piggybacking on you, and I think that would be my last point, is I've also found that the people I've spoken with about is the why taking over, or what happened to the food peel, okay, we hired Kevin, is that, and this happened with other boards that come in when I've been in other communities when I was working in government, where the psychology is, this is our place, meaning everything here should be run by us, for us, which yep. is good, and the people should be ours. So the conversations I have is, in, you know, meaning the instructors, yep. or I want my instructor that I've had for 10 years, yes. because she knows me, or he knows me, uh -huh. and listens to me, you know, and, and, I, and I get that. So the conversations I have are in these days and times with limited budgets, with increased regulation, with requirements from various sources about safety, about certifications, about all these sorts of things. The more partnerships that the city does in numerous ways, including the Senior Center and the Elder Services Department, is to do exactly what you said. So that, no, is the why taking over? Yeah. No. 
is does it make sense in the pilot program and with and I also brought up with people that you know it's, it's having the ability to remember we have increased hours we're now open yes. on Saturday we're in the evenings the, the circle of people we are serving is expanding yes so that the Y has resources and their instructors because we can't afford to hire all the staff so that they can, the partnerships we bring, or not we, you, you guys bring in, enhances all of that. So try to think of it as, because when people say, well, then I'll go to the Y. I said, but you don't want to go to the Y. That's why you go here. Yes. Or and that's why the Y is a good, right. or can't, can't afford it. So that's why it can be a good partnership. Yeah. So look at it as you're getting a quality program because we're getting more bang, quote unquote, mm -hmm. for our buck. And the more resources that we can do where it's either in-house with, quote unquote, our own people, because I hear a lot of, well, uh, our people. I'm never, I never actually have said, who are our people? Are, are we all our people? But I, I decided I don't want to go, I don't want to go <laughs> don't there. Go there. <laughs> but so I try to talk about the partnership. And then it seems sort of like, what you what you know what you were saying about then people seem to go oh so I'm trying to deal with the psychology of it versus getting into the why isn't taking over yes it is no it isn't yes it is right. no it isn't and then I get well, stuck in this it. thing yeah. and I try right. to bring a different way and then I and then my hope is um, since nobody can seem to keep secrets you know tell one person <laughs> you know ten other people know. My hope is that, that that person tells the other person they talk to so that in, instead of having a big forum or you have to talk to 30 people, that if I can get to the 10 people who I've talked to and they talk to 10 people, eventually some semblance of what's actually happening might, might get through. Is, is, is my hope. And, but I also recognize that there will be people who I just want my old instructor. Mm -hmm. well, I'm know. sorry, they retired or they quit. Yeah. But it is a hard thing for any of us because in order to build trust is, is essential. And when, when life is swirling around, so it could, you know, when things are so unsteady that trust is, is really a, it's a, it's an anchor for a lot of people. And so right. I think that's the difficulties. Right. I mean, having worked in the field of gerontology and my master's in that, you know. That's that's what we you know I understand. Yeah, those are one of the in, what I call in, inhibitions to. Yeah, uh, you know, so how do we work in it? Support mm -hmm. people, and also that. know that this is also a very drop-in place. Mm -hmm. So all summer I haven't been to the gym, so I'm going to go to the gym and I'm going to see changes. Now, if I want to, you bitch, look marvelous. If I want to bitch and moan because the changes are different, I will. But that's what happens. It's sort of like a popcorn thing. So it's like not. You can talk to one person who hasn't been here, and then there's change. They haven't paid attention to the changes, and they're upset. So there's all kinds of things that we're coming up against, too. Yeah. So you know, it's we're not here to provide psychological services for people, no, but no, we well, can I'm just that. you know, but, yeah. well, we are in a way. We're saying yeah, we have to comfort them. They're people. lost. Blah blah. You just no, have to tell. People. Kathy, could you not talk at the same time as me? Sure. I really appreciate I that. Thank I'm you. Sorry. So anyway, go ahead, Deborah. Oh, did you finish yeah, your sentence? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, well, thank you. Um, we were talking a minute ago, and it made me think of something. Um, I've worked as a trainer uh, doing workshops, and one way we did elicited feedback, uh, you know, program evaluations or whatever, was to ask for a plus and a wish. I'm sure some of you have probably used the same technique in your work. And so I, this made me think of the idea that when we're interacting with people that if somebody, you know, starts with a negative or something they're concerned about or, you know, upset about or whatever, that I wanted to also, my hope is that we might also be able to take the opportunity to, to say, okay, I hear that's your wish or you wish that this could be different or this way or that way, but could, you know, we're trying to gather positive feedback too. Could you tell me what you do like, you know, is happening? And so we might be able to, every one of those 
uh, interactions could be an opportunity to elicit some positive feedback as well. And I also I wanted, on that note, I was sitting here thinking while I was listening that I wanted to share positive feedback because um, I used to teach exercise here myself and as an instructor and a person in public health and health education and all that, I and program management, I remember years ago going into the cafe, or I don't know if that's what it's still called, the little uh, snack shop, say, coffee shop saying, you know, we need some healthier options in here. And I couldn't even get a healthy option for myself coming in as an instructor. I needed a, a yogurt or whatever. So I want, I, on that plus and wish, I'm saying I want to say I'm glad to see um, that change and also um, another change I had been advocating years ago, which you may have heard me say in the past for evening and weekend fitness hours. And now we have opportunities, uh, additional opportunities for that and for cultural things that I think um, is very positive and it brings people from the, the less social isolation and more opportunities to mm -hmm. interact uh, for people who are busy, um, otherwise occupied or working during the day. And then just to finish off this comment, if I may, is I also wrote down, um, and I would just love to learn another time uh, whether it's with the Y or whomever else you're talking about, you know, contracting with what, or even now and into the future, what is the method of communication, or if we could describe that method of communication with them, how, whether it's a, a question around, like you're saying, the feedback we're getting from the surveys, or whether, you know, the makeup of which classes, or just if there's regular communication with the um, why. I mean, of course, we could say yes, there is, but to look at, well, what is, what is that? And how often, or mm -hmm. that kind of thing. And how does that kind of thing work? Because I just wanted to learn more about, like, the process and how it's determined, like, <coughs> who to have a contract that separately, you were talking about contract. I didn't know if you meant you were, we were also looking at other potential places to have a contract with for fitness. I'm not trying to say I, that's what it is. It has to go out <laughs> to bid for it to be within the laws around procurement. So, so the first year was just like a pilot or an experiment, but now it's, if I understand right, you're saying it's going out to bid? We're, we're going to move towards a creating a service a picture of what kind of service we want to put out for contract. So we are defining that now. Um, we are gathering input from patrons. We are yeah. assessing what's working and what's not working. We're looking at what we are offering and what it costs people. We're looking at everything um, and we're going to make some decisions on what kind of model and services we want to get from another entity to make our programming better. Whether it's the Y or any other organization. Yes. Regarding, we're talking about regarding fitness in particular at this time. That is the only contract yeah. that I'm currently working yeah. on, yes. Got it. And so is there going to be a process? So will, I'm not as familiar with it as maybe I ought to be, what that process, when would it go out to bid and how does that work? So I, I don't think that that is something I should go over here in a board meeting. Um, and um, I will let, I will keep you informed about oh, okay. when we've defined, when we've made some decisions and that when it's going out to bid and it'll be in the paper and it'll be public knowledge. Um, but I, I'm not gonna involve the board in um, the whole process. Oh, okay. but Because <laughs> that wouldn't be appropriate. Stay, stay um, yeah. in the know kind of about when when it does or what it no I just wanted to understand the or to understand the process when we're just to learn how a city process like that works right but that's I don't all. think that's a good use we, of our time for another for time that's yeah. all I'm Dennis? wondering one I would like to move on yeah at this point in the agenda um, secondly the procurement process is the city that really has nothing to do with us so we shouldn't get involved and thirdly, I want to thank you uh, for providing all of the stuff about the why 
that clearly from last year to now that Marie actually has been communicating. Yes, you, she has been you actually said, and and so the reality is, even I couldn't remember, all, you know, remember all that stuff. So I don't blame any of the patrons, but they don't realize right. that for a year now, you know, we've sort of been talk, well, talking. When I joined the board, that. I printed the last two years worth of minutes yeah. to <laughs> see. So what you can do a great place. summary. <laughs> For us all to shame. I'm sorry. Uh, no, so no, I thank you for that. So well, that just I tend to be that just there. showed the, the, the point. No, yes. that all and then it was, actually, but it, yeah. then it all of a sudden bloomed. Right, yeah. And and it's golfing. Yeah. Michael, nice one more comment and yeah. we got to move just on. Just a quick thing. Yes. I appreciate the summary. But what I have learned here is that the discussion of the summary has made me smarter, wiser. I don't think we should downplay the opportunities mm -hmm. to have rich discussions that are informed by the Chronicle article or whatever. Um, it helps me. I, now I'm smarter, I, I, I know better, I remember more. So there are times when a good discussion, and this has been a good discussion. Mm -hmm. and by the way, I, I've not heard negative stuff. About, I hear all kinds of positive stuff about the why. Look at all these programs, and, you know. Right. And I can talk about it a little bit, but now I can do it better. So, okay. Cindy, I want to um, get back to the point that she made that occasionally, if we sort of bullet pointed the important things, mm -hmm. and I learn from the discussions that you people have. Mm -hmm. uh, I can read something and I can interpret it, but we know full well, we human beings, we each read, yeah. we don't have everybody the exact same interpretation of everything we read. And I just have benefited from this discussion. So I would like to get back to what Cindy suggested. If there was a way we could identify the important things and have a discussion, it wouldn't have to be this long. Uh, so I, I'm happy to send occasional updates. Um, and I would encourage you, I think, as being part of this council, that it um, being involved at the center as much as you can mm -hmm. is helpful. Mm -hmm. Reading everything that we put out, I will make sure, I will check to make sure that you are all on the constant contact email list because we are working really hard to communicate what we're doing. And if you aren't paying attention and you miss some things and then you hear about it from patrons or you come here to get all your information, you're not really doing your part. And Did I suggest that that was what we were doing? Did, did, did no, I'm just that? saying I would like, I would really love it if you would make it a point to read my article every month. I do. Okay. It, I wasn't I, sure. I don't know why I, was I have to get this response. I only was suggesting that the discussion can enrich what I've read. Yes, I it. understand. I just, but the I, response is, from what I just heard, well, maybe you're not reading this stuff, and if you read it, you'd be better well, off. Well, so he, he read a lot of material, and he got information, and he wanted some clarifying things. But I, I just feel like I'm not getting a lot of, um, I feel attacked when I come to this meeting. And I don't feel like you know what's going on, and I feel like um, that we're working really hard. I feel like you've insulted me. I'm sorry you feel that way. Yeah. I, I would like to move on feel, the agenda. Have, have feelings work. Okay. I think we need to move on. Mm -hmm. So what I would recommend is if you have some questions, you can always let me know that we can put them on the agenda and we can have a discussion. So this was like a popcorn discussion that came up, but if there are things that you want clarity about, we can clarify them in this meeting. Okay. So that was old business. We have new business. I don't know if we have anything now that we... Anybody have anything? And then we'll go to the assistant director's report. Okay, great, thank you. Um, sort of piggybacking on what Marie just mentioned is the the fact that to provide all of the resources um, or all of the services here at the Senior Center, we rely on the kindness of our volunteers. And that's a big part of uh, my job is recruiting and training and 
you know, putting, uh, putting people to work in areas that we really need them. Um, still kind of getting my feet wet in, in that, but I have recognized that we have a lot of need. We don't have a paid staff to take care of anything that we want to do, that we need to take care of. And so first I want to thank, you know, the members of this council who are volunteers um, consistently showing up and, and being a part of the solutions um, and being a positive uh, force here with us. And, um, you know, also to put out the fact that we, we still we still are recruiting for volunteers very heavily. Um, so if you are aware of anybody who has the capacity to come join us, um, we have lots of opportunities that we need to have filled. And I brought um, applications, so if anyone here in this room is interested, um, you know, feel free to fill out an application and hand it in to me and we'll, we'll have a... Do they have to be Northampton residents? To be volunteers? No, no. of course not. Nope. No. Don't have to be Northampton residents, don't have to be a senior. Um, we're looking for all a uh, big spectrum of skills and experience and um, you know, again, we can't we can't do it without the volunteers. So we do have several openings. Um, what? Can you be um, so right now we have openings in our reception area. We have openings in our bistro, and we have openings in our coffee shop. And then there's lots of little pockets uh, Pro where we programming, can, yeah, yeah, programming, um, data analysis, financial um, analysis, those kinds of things. Um, I can't. I don't really have like the specifics on those, but I, you know these these sort of routine yeah, things. Writers yeah. for the Chronicle. We're always looking for more writers. Uh -huh. um, grant assistance with grants, transportation, uh, medical drivers. Uh, I just sent in my app for volunteering for medical. Grant. I got that. It's on my desk. Thank you. Yeah. 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 So yeah. So um, that's really all I have. Uh, to say about it, but if you do want an application, you don't see me before you go. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay, so Do you have a critical need, a specific <coughs> thing, like you Yeah, that's where it's going, yeah. Oh, critical, yeah. yeah like right, right now, like right two now, or three <laughs> critical. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we need drivers, um, dispatch people, drivers, and we need um, the bistro workers, um, yeah, for a couple of shifts. Yeah. And we're, right now, we're kind of filling those in with subs, uh, you know, as we can, uh, Kathy <laughs> fills in quite a bit wherever <laughs> wherever she's needed, so that's helpful. But yeah, okay. and also, oh, Go if ahead. I could just put in another yeah. plug, we do have an opening for a part-time staff assistant. So, um, and we've had that opening for quite a while. So, if, if you know any person who can work 19 and a half hours a week, you know, um, lifting. Shares and, yeah, who can who can do like the physical hours work. would be that's uh, like okay. flexible. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah but they need to be able to do heavy lifting mm -hmm. and yeah. fast paced yeah. kind of. Mm -hmm. And when set up take in and yeah. add, adding you know the nighttime um, classes and the and the weekend classes that takes um, a staff person away from the week mm -hmm. to to cover because mm -hmm. we have to have usually have to have somebody on staff in the building sure. uh, for those kinds of things. So it takes our you know the, those resources away from the weekly or the daily things, and uh, so more volunteers and then another staff assistant would be great. So for yeah. staff uh, at nighttime and stuff like that, would you need people to? I mean, a volunteer could just stay up and man the desk and stuff and be here. The person, why do you work the nighttime hours and stuff? Um, for volunteers, yeah, I mean, it's helpful to have a volunteer um, until we're open at seven. Um, mm -hmm. We have a custodian yeah. covering two to ten now, so we're not covering building rentals. Yeah. Uh, the custodian, like other city departments, is covering building use when we're closed. Yeah, that's good. Just along the um, recruitment for volunteer, volunteer and volunteer management, um, I know, and I'm so pleased that now we have the Facebook page up because I think someone had mentioned when I brought it up a while ago. I know there were issues, and it was mentioned like, oh, seniors don't. I don't know too many seniors who use Facebook, but like you were saying, it could be anyone of any age. Mm -hmm. Uh, and many 
people are pretty savvy and, and do use it. Mm -hmm. It may, but long story short, uh, I'm only sharing that because it may be a vehicle for recruiting. For recruiting, and that's what I'd initially brought up before we got a Facebook page again. And also, I was wondering if the, I know you, um, I think the Gazette, I was told, is helping with. We have a contract with the Gazette for and, our design and marketing. And so I was just wondering if there's any chance or if it could be explored that they may be able to all be helpful with that need for volunteer recruitment to put, if there could be something put in the Gazette somehow or, you know, potentially. Mm -hmm. So I'm, what I'm trying to do is be creative with problem solving around this because yeah. I know it's a chronic problem, but I, you know, if we put all our great marketing brains together, we could come up with some yeah. help. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Okay, Jay, are you done with your yes, report? Yes, I am. Yeah. Do you want to read the report? Um, so I probably covered most things. I'm, I'm, you know, you will see in the Chronicle that we've started a bunch of new programs this month, um, including um, the partnership with the Alzheimer's Association for the Community um, Sing, which is for families who are experiencing dementia um, and caregivers. Um, so that's a monthly program. We're doing, of course, the LGBTQ luncheon monthly. Um, we've added, um, you know, many Y exercise classes. Um, we are offering in October some intergenerational programming on a Saturday. That's a partnership with the early development program at the school. Um, and we'll be doing a story hour for younger kids and a animation project for grandparents and older kids. Um, and um, we're working a lot on our age-friendly initiatives. So the um, EARN program, we received a grant from MCOA to build on what Earn's been doing around older workers seeking employment and kind of pull together a partnership with age-friendly and dementia-friendly work with Earn to address um, specifically age-friendly business development. So educating businesses about how to be age-friendly towards consumers, but also towards their older workers and be encouraging them to hire older workers. Um, so I'm excited about that, and um, you know we're sort of trucking along with all these different initiatives, um, and you know of course food is always one of our big focuses, um, and I think people are pretty happy with that. We're looking at how to sort of sustain a three dollar meal, um, so we're looking at you know working with Elder Vision to do fundraising so that we can. Um, support keeping things within the, the bracket that people need it to be in. Um, and of course we're doing surveys. So I, I think we're gonna wanna keep doing surveys and about all the different programs that we're, we're gearing up to do a transportation survey um, because that's also a program that requires a lot of monitoring in order to be sustainable. Um, and um, so, you know, we may, we may create sort of a subcommittee or a working group around <coughs> looking at those kinds of um, surveys, the data that comes out of them. Um, but we, we really need people who have those skills. And I think um, there are probably some volunteers we can definitely get from RSVP or um, who come along here that have those specific skills. Um, so. I know it's a call to ask people to um, reserve for dining here. Is, is, are we starting to have too many walk-ins that we can't accommodate? So we kind of enabled that because we didn't require it. Like Kevin just made extra food. And so what will happen is um, they'll, Kevin will give our major d' a list of how, a number of how many extra meals he has. And a lot of you know, people just don't want to commit. They want to come when they feel like it. And so, um, you know, some senior centers deal with that by like having an A meal and a B meal. So if you come, you get the hot meal. If you register, you get a hot meal. And if you if you didn't register, you get a sandwich. Or um, you know, 
they're, they have different ways of dealing with this issue. Um, and I think we do need people to register. Um, we also need to bring more revenue. And I, I'm trying to figure out, like I'm thinking maybe we need to have someone who will deliver meals so that city departments will take advantage and we'll get more $7 meals coming uh -huh. out of here because that really helps offset the $3 meal. And um, it's $7 is a really good deal. I mean, if I go downtown to get my lunch, it's like $10, $15. Like, you know, if I get a drink and a, and a meal, um, so I think that city departments is you know going to be our first plan of attack, but um, um, yeah, and so we're also trying to create things around lunchtime. So you know we're we're building in entertainment. So and speakers before lunch and speakers after lunch. Or the movie is very popular. Um, but you know we're trying to kind of beef up all our programming so that people are getting. If they choose to come here for one thing, they get two, uh -huh. two or three other things out of it if they want to. Um, food is what brings right. people in. I was just piggyback on that because when you had the barbecue, I was guilty because I was in Montreal. I tried to sign up to, and then I came and, and I you realized. Were still able to eat. Yep. No, because I realized uh, that other people, if there was extra, they should go. So I, I didn't do well, it. Well, I mean, what but we, the great yeah. thing also was that was from twelve to one, and from one to two, you had the Berkshire people mm -hmm. who did the uh, Broadway show, the show tune guy, yeah. you know, going to Broadway. So I thought it was a good. I guess I'm just reinforcing what you're saying is sort of like crossover. Come for lunch, then there's a program, uh, but not where you have not where you have to exercise. Not that I'm against it. But you can listen to music, you know, and it was like a good thing. So yeah. from 12 to 2, there was this come get your barbecue meal for, and that was, I think, a $5, $5 meal. meal. Yeah, we're doing it once a month. Once a month, $5 meal. meal. But then you could stay for entertainment, mm -hmm. and then people were already in the big room where the chairs were set up. So, yeah. I, you know, I thought that Yeah, you don't have to eat to, to enjoy No, you didn't, have, you didn't have to yeah. do that, because that's when I decided I wasn't going to eat. Uh, sadly, uh, but that's my own fault. <laughs> well, we, yeah, we're trying to have free programming as well because I think, right. you know, we we want to have something for everyone. And um, so um, the other thing that's you know was also in the Chronicle, I guess, but is um, coming this month is the installation of the new rain garden design, and then next month we'll be doing a workshop where people can come and sort of inform what other green space, the little that we have, could be developed into usable space for outside use. Um, and then the electric assist bikes will go on, go down here by the Gazette, I think is free to sponsor them. And um, What was that? The electric assist bikes. That oh, this, electric yeah, the, the, the Valley Bikes share. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, just really, being involved in a lot of the city planning and getting, beefing up our, our look and our resources, even if it's just a small patch of green outside that we actually can have some outdoor seating and people can enjoy some outdoor space, which would be nice, so. Oh, yeah. yeah, do you know the electric assist by thinking of age friendly, do they have like three wheel bikes? Because a lot of older people may have a harder time riding bikes like this. But there's something like that, that would be really ideal to have you. I'm just thinking about that. Um, well, I mean, I, I think they are not great for everyone. Um, because they weigh like 70 pounds, yes. but they're, um, they're heavier. Yeah. Hmm. you know, they, they have the electric yeah. assist. But we, we have done some partnerships with the rail trail. Yeah. Um, Oh, yeah. Committee and they've done some demos like where people are trying the bike. So you know we're trying to um, if there are programs that you think would be beneficial for us to offer, we and, and even better if you know places that could help us with it. Like we we are connecting with all the places that have resources that are good for seniors and trying to bring that programming here or partner to have it outside of here. So. Um, you know, we, we, we really need uh, 
those connections, but we also need the ideas. Sometimes we don't have all the ideas. So. Okay. It looks like we went into other by asking you questions. <laughs> well, yeah, it's fine to ask me questions. Um, I'm just trying to think if there's anything I left off. I'm, I, the architect, the study with the architect, which was um, funded through the capital improvement budget, um, has been sort of waylaid by summer vacations and things like that. But, um, but that is moving forward, and I should know more about what that will look like. Um, and um, I will be working on the next capital improvement request, which will include all the things that didn't get funded before. Um, but um, you know, we're we're making headway on all the areas that I've sort of outlined when I started, um, and more. Um, and um, so. But you know, we we definitely you know feedback is good. We we don't currently have a forum for it, but this is kind of where people have been told to bring their stuff or send emails. So I just want to piggyback on your green space with the pollinator thing. So yeah. those people are going to be working on it this fall. Is that so? This happen? Sunday, they're looking for volunteers to help remove oh, plants Sunday. from the rain garden that are not pollinator friendly mm -hmm. um, and to make space for plants that the workshop participants identified as things that they wanted to see there okay, and that so will that's provide what I mean by the rain garden. Yeah, they'll okay. provide more beauty throughout all the seasons because it looks pretty bleak in the winter. Like there's no color, there's just right. some grasses and so it's gonna be much prettier and then in October we will look at that green space and see what people would like to um, change about the green space that might make it more usable. I don't know if people notice there's a little uh, cornered off to make an intimate space. There's sort of a, a little fence that's sort of in the middle of it yeah. that kind of divides it. So I think that people may come up with some ideas about how it might be able to be opened up a bit so that there's more use of the green space and, um, and still encompass all the things that it does now okay. so um, yeah. oh well yeah are they still here they were out they were dressed as butterflies in the lobby yes. today yeah. <laughs> yeah sorry I missed that so <laughs> I need that for Halloween <laughs> yeah so Should lots, they connect, connect? <laughs> lots of good stuff going on and um, um, I think in October also there'll be um, an age-friendly, uh, the city got AARP money to, to look at age-friendly design in Florence, and so there will be professors from Smith College and an art experience kind of piece to it as well where people can come give feedback about what they'd like to see happen in Florence in terms of walkability and um, transportation and just making it more age friendly um, and, and so. I can just add um, hopefully in partnership we have written the paper that Forbes library got a grant to for some portable equipment to be able to do storytelling and you know. be able to use that equipment to have people uh, what they might like to see in Florence but also what their memories of old-time Florence are, mm -hmm. particularly folks who worked in so many of the factories and mills that are visible but closed, and just to start that if you made off. Oral history has just been one. Yeah, and, and we'll, we'll have access to that portable recording studio here. I wrote a letter to support uh, as a supporting letter for that grant. and. Um, I'm really excited about a lot of what Forbes is doing, and we, we are trying to collaborate with Forbes as yeah. much as we can. And they have offered to be a pilot for the age friendly business, it's very much very oh, much good. intrigued to sort of literally be a guinea pig to walk through whatever the protocol is here works. Okay, well, I think we're ready to adjourn. Um, yeah. oh, oh. <coughs> One comment is I'm staring at the photo of Fans Francis Crow hidden behind the. Oh. I'm just wondering. If it would be for a short period of time to pull it out and hang it someplace out sure. there with just, and whether it's a copy of her obituary, but many Francis Crow just recently died yeah. at 100, 
a really strong talk about image of positive aging. Definitely. Um, yeah. Just to sort of highlight the fact that we have it, I sort of looked and then looked again and realized that that was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm hoping someone will write a book about, oh, wow. about, about her, her and then they'll come speak here. Yeah. That's a great, that's a great yeah, idea. Yeah. Oh, could I also just make an announcement that Highland Valley is sponsoring uh, uh, Keys to Aging Well, Healthy Aging. It's like a um, just a oh. um, a big uh, like a expo over in Hadley, but at the um, mm -hmm. meeting. Um, yeah, the meeting house there, and it's on October. First, from 3 to 4.30, it's free, and they have a lot of vendors if people are interested in anything. So, and how do I, remind me again, you know, the, the, the weekly uh, chronicle, the news that goes out, can, can I just send you something to put in that? So they you know, did send it to me, and we okay. didn't have space for okay. the September, but we can try to get it into the October, okay. even though it can yeah. be a little Well, but you know, the weekly there. things, the, the constant email, the co constant the email. Comment. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I have I have it already. Okay. So Good. I can just plug it in. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'd like to adjourn. Someone like to make the motion? Kind of and section seven. Seven. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. All right. Opposed? And abstain. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.